This is Jupiter Today for the 31st of March, 2015. Jupiter Today is a daily podcast focusing attention on the dynamic Jupiter system for the purpose of monitoring activity. So today there's nine Jupiter satellite events and three satellite mutual events. So it's going to be a busy day at Jupiter. This is usually happens when Callisto and Ganymede get near Jupiter to have their encounters not only with the planet but also with Io and Europa who are of course closer in and they have a lot more interactions when Callisto and Ganymede are are near Jupiter from Earth's point of view so it's a busy day today. At zero hours UTC Io begins the day in quadrant three heading west Europa starts the day moving behind Jupiter and going to be going into quadrant 1 heading east. Ganymede starts the day in quadrant 2 heading west, along with Callisto, who is also in quadrant 2 heading west. At 3.02 UTC, Europa reappears from Jupiter's shadow. At 6 hours UTC, Io is now firmly in quadrant 4 heading west. And Europa is now firmly in quadrant one, heading east. At 6.12 UTC, Io goes through an apogee. That's the furthest distance it's going to be from Jupiter in this orbit. And that's 423,547.3 kilometers. And then from 6.12 to 6.13 UTC, Ganymede occults Europa. And let's see, that's... Yeah, here's six hours UTC here and six hours UTC on Europa. So that's a nice a nice long path. First an occultation. It's 1.3 minutes long, but it's a, a very um, shallow occultation. It's the impact parameter is 0.98 arc seconds with a estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.002 magnitudes. So it's hardly worth observing. But perhaps you should, with some photometric observations, you may detect some dust moving through. Don't know. The distance this occultation is from Jupiter is 72.95 arc seconds. And then from 918 UTC to 925 UTC, Ganymede eclipses Europa, and that's a 7.1 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.552 arc seconds and an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.37 magnitudes. And it's a good distance away from Jupiter too, 110.45 arc seconds, with Ganymede and Europa being 73.2 arc seconds apart. I would say that that's a more favorable event to do some photometric work with. And then at 1021 UTC, Ganymede goes through a pair Jove. That's the closest, closest it's going to be in this orbit. And that's 1,067,918.2 kilometers. And by 12 hours UTC, Io is soon to, going to be moving behind Jupiter and going into quadrant one, still heading east. And Ganymede is soon to begin its transit. At 12.28 UTC, Io indeed does move behind Jupiter. And at 12.45 UTC, the transit of Ganymede begins. At 15.51 UTC, Io reappears from Jupiter's shadow. From 16.15 to 16.21 UTC, Ganymede eclipses Io. That's a 5.3 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.651 arc seconds and an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.255 magnitudes. Unfortunately, that's pretty close to Jupiter this time, 27.49 arc seconds, 68.95 arc seconds apart. But it is a fairly long shadow. And then at 1622 UTC, the transit of Ganymede ends. At 17.03, the shadow of Ganymede ingresses. 
At 1710 UTC, the transit of Callisto begins. And then by 18 hours UTC, Europa is very near its eastern elongation. I'm going to go into quadrant two, heading west. Ganymede is transiting. And Callisto is very, very near the beginning of its transit. By 2041 UTC, Ganymede's shadow egresses. And at 2156, the transit of Callisto ends. And then by zero hours UTC tomorrow, you can see that EO is at its eastern elongation, going to be moving into quadrant two, heading west, joining Europa. And Ganymede has now transited and is firmly in quadrant three, heading west. And Callisto is now transiting. So from 1710 to 2041 UTC, both the shadow of Ganymede and the moon Callisto are passing across the face of Jupiter. Okay, orbital ribbons for today. These are the spatial and temporal connections between the four Galilean moons. Here's the connection between Io and Europa. Io and Ganymede. It's fairly symmetric. There's Io and Callisto, and that's a fantastic twist there. And then Europa and Ganymede. Europa and Callisto. And finally Ganymede and Callisto. And then we combine all of these and colorize them, get rid of the orbital lines to get that for today. And I'm, I'm sort of seeing that bowl shape again here with the, with the Eo Europa interaction. Okay, 24 hours of Jupiter sky. Standing on the equator of Jupiter, looking out over the next 24 hours. There's always a lot of activity in the Jupiter system. There's Ganymede and Callisto meeting up. There's Eo just popping in from Jupiter's shadow. The red spot crosses Jupiter's meridian three times today, the first at 1.11, the second at 11.09, and the third at 21.04 UTC. There was a new image posted. And there was no new radio data, but there was a new paper. This is a very exciting paper to come out for myself because it uh, created a lot of new contacts of researchers that are basically trying to do the same thing that I'm trying to do. So I'm in the process of contacting them to see if we can do some collaborations, perhaps. And there was no new radio data. So at zero hours UTC, the position of Jupiter on Earth's celestial sphere is a right ascension of nine hours, zero minutes, 58.1 seconds, and a declination of positive 17 degrees, 58 minutes, 54.7 seconds. The angular separation between Jupiter and the Sun 
as seen from Earth, is 122.744 degrees, and that's 1.017 degrees less than what it was yesterday. The phase angle today is 9.038 degrees, and that's 0 0.107 degrees greater than what it was yesterday. The distance between Jupiter and the Earth is 709,320,746 kilometers, and that's 2,000,000. 3,252 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday, and that gives a radial velocity between Jupiter and the Earth of 83,468.83 kilometers per hour, and that's 964.41 kilometers per hour faster than what it was yesterday. If you go to my blog, I recently made a post about thinking about the motion, the relative motion of Jupiter and Earth, and I made some discoveries for myself that I think are interesting and very confusing, and I would like to understand them a little bit better. So go to my blog to read those. The distance between Jupiter and the Sun today is 800,049,957 kilometers, and that's 44,122 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. And that gives a radial velocity between Jupiter and the Sun of 1,838.42 kilometers per hour. And that's 0.21 kilometers per hour slower than what it was yesterday. The central meridian at zero hours UTC, CM1, 77.81 degrees, CM2, 54.24 degrees, CM3, 336.67 degrees. So please subscribe and hit that like button and make any kind of comments that you would like. I like to hear comments and answer questions and hear suggestions about how to make this podcast ever better. I am working on some new graphics. We'll see how those come along. They're still in development, but I'm always trying to improve and give different perspectives on the very dynamic Jupiter system, which I believe we know very little about. And I think that if we were just to watch and observe and record, we could learn a lot more than what we know now, which, as I said, I believe is very little. So you can send your comments and questions and images to the email shown. I'm adding to the database constantly. So until tomorrow, I bid you peace.